Hello everyone. Welcome to the channel. Jim Reads Too Slow. I'm Jim and I have a little catching up to do um, due to the fact that uh, traditionally this is probably one of the worst times of the year for me um, for a variety of reasons. I have neglected to make a video in ah, for a few weeks. So uh, I have been reading despite everything that's been working against me uh, and I've even finished a couple of things. So I'll just jump right in. Uh, I have finished recently uh, this book, Earth of the New Sun, by Gene Wolfe, uh, and this book really blew me away. I, I, I have to say that right off the top. Uh, I've been taking part in a reading group uh, on Voxer. Uh, we've been reading Wolfe's, um, his four-volume book of the New Sun. I finished that last month and thought, yeah, pretty good science fiction. Um, I enjoyed it. I was left with a feeling of accomplishment for having done so. Made me think. I I would definitely recommend it. And then I had this, you know, on hand. Um, and I heard from several people that this was their, um, it's not technically a part of the Book of the New Sun. Uh, it's more of a, like a sequel or it's called, what's called a coda. Um, I've heard from you know, read many people who said that that this book is their favorite of of that of that whole series, and I thought, well, let's go. I've got it. Uh, several others in, in the group were talking about moving on into it, so um, I did. And um, I would say that of the five Gene Wolf books. Uh, that I have read, this definitely um, is my favorite. Uh, it, I would I would say it's a must read uh, if you want to get the most out of your reading of the Book of the New Sun. Uh, if you want to have the best experience, uh, I, I have to say that after reading Earth of the New Sun, I get what all the Gene Wolf hype is about. Uh, so compared with the first four books, the book of the new sun uh, is just action packed. Uh, like the others, it's narrated by Severian, uh, the one time torturer, uh, one time ruler. And a lot of it takes place in space uh, and in other dimensions. And it spans almost all of human history uh, in, in its storytelling. Uh, from the dawn of the Inca civilization to the distant future. And it's got, along with that, all kinds of aliens, uh, monsters, time travel, dimensional travel, uh, swashbuckling uh, action, romance. It's got things going on on all levels. And it explains, if you can call it that, uh, what's going on behind the scenes of the first four books of the series. Uh, it, it also, uh, the religious themes are a lot stronger in Earth of the New Sun, a lot clearer, uh, a lot more explicit. Uh, it's really difficult to sum up without spoilers. So I'm going to go ahead and, and give a few spoilers. So if you haven't uh, finished reading uh, the Book of the New Sun, then um, jump ahead, I guess. <laughs> uh, one of the, one way of looking at this story uh, at least the way I see it, is that Severian is, um, he's, he's someone who's traveling a road toward enlightenment, uh, salvation. He's a Christ figure uh, who in the end cleanses and actually does save the world. I found myself seeing Severian though, uh, on the other hand, by the same token, I guess, uh, as, uh, as kind of a, a time and dimension traveling Forrest Gump. Uh, he still ends up as the Christ figure who saves the world, but he kind of stumbles into it. He just, he, he kind of pops up here and there throughout history, throughout the events and history um, and lore of the Book of the New Sun. And because he's so naive, uh, because he has such a limited knowledge of what's going on, uh, he can't seem to keep his mouth shut. He can't, he can't quite keep his hands to himself. And so he kicks off a civilization here. He uh, starts a religion there. Uh, he's actually worshiped as a God. 
Uh, he inspires the evolution of what uh, becomes his own guild. Um, he has sex with just about every woman he meets, as I've said before, but he has sex with just the right alien um, who, when he climaxes, he creates what apparently uh, is the white hole or that white fountain that is destined to rejuvenate Earth's sun. And because it's actually a part of him from that time on, um, it's the source of all of his, uh, all the power uh, that uh, creates or that, that powers the superhuman things that are going on about, around him throughout the, throughout the, the story. So Severian is the force behind uh, major moments throughout history. And along the way, he's killed. It dies at least two times that are clear, possibly many times. And he either resurrects himself uh, through the power of this white fountain that is hurtling through time and space toward Earth or toward Earth's sun, or he's brought back to life by aliens who are uh, watching over him. And, and he's brought back as a kind of an intelligent golem or, uh, or like a Pinocchio character uh, who's not quite all together at the start, but gradually is transformed each time into a real person with all the same memories. And, uh, and, and so uh, this is because he's so important to the scheme of things, apparently because he is the new son. So this book, uh, along with the series, uh, they're, not, they're not really straightforward uh, science fiction narratives. Uh, mankind in the stories has regressed uh, in the course of a punishment against Earth um, that has been imposed uh, by extraterrestrial forces. Uh, at one time, humans were a spacefaring race uh, but now they've, because of this punishment, they've been uh, reduced, they've reverted back to almost a Middle Ages level of development. Although with, with the knowledge that they had uh, once this techn technological knowledge and power, and they even have the use of some of it. Um, but because our narrator is a man of his time, uh, all of the descriptions uh, are in a, the simpler language of his more primitive society. So the readers left to figure out a lot of what's going on by themselves. So for example, you're reading along and, and suddenly it dawns on you that, uh, hey, this tower that they're describing is actually a spaceship. Uh, this part of the city, it, it once was a spaceport and when the spacefaring stopped, the ships were just left standing there and gradually over time they were repurposed until their original purpose was, you know, lost to the mists of time. Or, you know, wait a minute, the city, the, these things they're describing that are being described here, this is a, this is the dry lake bed of an ancient hydroelectric dam. Uh, so yeah, um, Earth of the New Sun, uh, it always an also answers the, uh, the nagging little questions that I had about the series. Like, like even if this story does take place a million or millions of years in the future, uh, isn't that still a little too soon for the sun to be dying out? So I'll stop there with that. Suffice it to say, this book gives you a lot to think about. Uh, and it's one that I imagine uh, that you get more out of each time uh, you read the series. So if you haven't read it yet, I definitely recommend, uh, encourage you to do so. And if you have read it, you know, read it again. So uh, in other reading, um, I also finished uh, The Mansion by William Faulkner. Uh, it's part of the Summer of Snopes or the Faulkner in August event this year. So finishing the, the mansion, I have read all three of the books in the Snopes trilogy, uh, which describe the rise and fall of Flem Snopes in uh, Yoknamatoffa County, Mississippi. 
Uh, I enjoyed the reading immensely. Uh, and there's still some people who are catching up, so I won't I won't go into too much detail about it. But uh, that's three Faulkner novels that I've completed this year, one behind last year. Uh, so to keep up, I have one more to go before the end of the year. And I'm thinking uh, I'm thinking either Absalom, Absalom, uh, maybe to get a jump on next year's Faulkner in August, or maybe I'll go with Go Down Moses. I don't know. I'm I'm definitely going to take a little Faulkner break though, a little breather. He's he is uh, not an easy read. I'll leave it at that. I'm also reading uh, America and the Cult of the Cactus Boots. There's a reading uh, going on uh, for this book right here by Philip Friedenberg, illustrated by Jeff Walton. Uh, to be honest, this is not a quick read either. Uh, I do read slow, as you all know, but I am making progress, uh, and I think it'll go a little quicker now. Uh, I'm enjoying it. Um, and then uh, I am finishing up The Tartan Step by Dino Buzzati as part of my family uh, book club. This book was written in 1940, um, and it's translated from Italian by Stuart C. Hood. It's, it's really good. It's kind of haunting in a way. Uh, I'm, like I say, I'm almost finished with it, um, and I'm loving it. Um, it. It's really making me think. So um, that's what I am reading and what I have read this month. Um, upcoming reading, I want to throw a little support behind uh, uh, Mark at Book Time with Elvis and Sean D. Stanfast, who are... Um, leading the, uh, the Dick Timber reading event uh, dedicated to private detective fiction. I'll be putting it together a TBR uh, for that one here in the next day or so. But I've got some Poe, I've got some Doyle. My wife is gonna loan me some of her uh, Hercule Poirot um, collection by Agatha Christie. Uh, of course, Raymond Chandler, Dashiell Hammett. My, I have several John D. MacDonald uh, uh, books. Um, so I've got a lot to choose from. Uh, so I'm looking forward to narrowing that down to an actual reading list. And then uh, I want to take part in uh, Shorty September, uh, the second annual Shorty September event, which was created by uh, and is being supervised again by Bert and Sean at uh, Pastory Time. And it has 12 prompts uh, for reading short books, uh, books kind of in the 200 plus page range and I have a bunch of those so I'll get uh, get a chance to uh, cross some of those off of my off of my list so in the next day or so I'm, I'll put together a TBR for that too uh, check out their page I'll leave a link to it and also to the uh, uh, the Dick Timber uh, kickoff video uh, below um, that looks like uh, September will be a lot of fun so with that, I'll, I'll uh, call it quits, and until next time, have a good one, BookTube.